Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten, and we are, of course, at the start of another weekly vlog, which this week I'm planning for it to be quite busy because we do have work, which as always, and then on my day off Thursday, we plan to do a bit of redecorating. But before we get into all of that, let's start off with what I'm currently reading. So, I did start The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. This is a book that my little brother gave me. He had a selection of books that he wanted me to choose from to read and talk about on my channel. Both him and my mum take the time to watch pretty much every single video. I think my little brother doesn't watch all of them, but my mum definitely does. And yeah, it would be cute for him to have a book that he actually is interested in. Although, as he calls it, it is The Lion in the Mirror, which to be fair, I can kind of see why he believes that with that book. I have to admit I've never actually read this book. It is a children's classic and I do believe my younger sister read this book when she was very little and I think we had the box set. I remember seeing them all together and I know she read a couple of them but it's not something I ever picked up. I have watched the films but I've never actually read the book and I have started this. I have read the first two chapters and it's honestly really love the writing. It is that classic children's writing which I just think is so beautiful and I'm at the part where Lucy has just wandered into Narnia for the first time. Now for those of you that don't know what this is about, it is about four children who are escaping, I think it's World War One or World War Two one of the world wars and they are going to live with this really friendly professor and his massive house and one day they go exploring and Lucy tumbles into this world and it is a world that is being ruled by the terrible evil winter queen. She is keeping the land of Narnia permanently in winter but without any Christmas and it's all about the adventures of what these four children get up to. I do, I'm enjoying it. It's a very short book so I do plan on finishing it up this week. We also have some wonderful illustrations throughout this book which I absolutely love and so far, again I only read the first two chapters, it does seem to be the film has followed it very well so it'll be interesting to see if it stays that way. But then a book that I'm carrying over from last week is my reread of Crescent City by Sarah J Mars or well technically House of Earth and Blood but everybody has pretty much called it Crescent City because I just think the way they did that writing on the cover nobody realised it was Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood. Tangent aside, this is a reread that I am very much enjoying. I am halfway through. It is about 800 pages long and really, really enjoying this. I like Bryce as our main character. We are in this world. It's an urban fantasy and we have lots of different factions of different magical people all living together. We have witches, vampires, werewolves. We also have fae, different um, water spirits, fire spirits and all sorts of of unique creatures including angels and demons as well which I really like because it creates this really diverse world also a bit of a murder mystery now this was pitched as Sarah J Maas first adult fantasy book but for me personally I feel like the Court of Thorns and Roses series definitely feels way more adult than young adult I feel like it started young adult and then definitely became adult with some of those explicit scenes now I know that it kind of fits in this new or new-ish category that I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around of a new adult which honestly if I hadn't started booktube I never would have heard of that it's always been young adult and adult like but it does make sense to have this kind of crossover space between the two so that's definitely where I think a Court of Thorns and Roses series sits in because some of those scenes man and then this is classed as her first adult fantasy book which again I just I'm really enjoying it's really gripping we have a series of murders that are happening and Bryce is having to team up with an angel hunt to find out what is going on and what's causing them and Bryce is kind of at the epicenter of everything because two years prior she was at the scene of a very gruesome murder and now these murders seem to be happening again and so they're trying to uncover who's doing it what's causing it but at the same time I'm having political tension between the autumn king of the fae as well as the archangel of angels and there's just a lot that's kind of coming to this boiling point in the city so it is really interesting and we also have humans that are rebelling because there's an area of this world where they are treated as like chattel and they are trying to rise up against them and so you have all of that in the background as well so I think it's really interesting world I really do enjoy it and um 
yes loving my reread of this so those are the two books that i plan on finishing this week now while we're doing that i am also over the next few weeks planning to redecorate my room not massively because there are certain things I can't change but i definitely want to make some changes because this room just doesn't make me feel like it's mine like the aesthetic and stuff which i know sounds really silly but it just doesn't and it's taken me a long time so i moved back into my mom's house two years ago actually of this month and at the time i was just so just going through this really hard time and obviously lockdown and that definitely has not helped that and now i'm just at this point of where i'm just like you know what I need to make some changes because a lot of this room is just mismatched items that I've brought with me from living with my sister and also items that like people have bought me but I don't actually like like they're not something that makes me feel happy when I'm looking at them and stuff and so it's time to just clear out everything so I did make a start last week where I started decluttering some items this week we're going to be taking that a little bit further so starting off we have changed this section. Now you can't actually see it, but let me move the camera. I now have this gorgeous witch print, which was actually over that wall over there. And I've kind of just changed this because I want it to be like my plant witchiness. So to go alongside my two plants that I've always had, which is my ficus, which I'm trying to turn around because you can see how I've been having it face outwards so i'm trying to get it to have a bit of sunshine and start coming out a bit more we'll see if that works and then we also have my lily plant which i've fed it because i'm not quite sure what's happening with some of these leaves and stuff like what is this but my gorgeous lily plant as per usual but we've also added to the collection we have this gorgeous little guy with its beautiful red and green leaves i think it's absolutely lovely i know this plant actually grows quite big but this was the last little one on the shelf and it just looks so lonely and i was just like okay you're coming home with me it is so so cute so that one lives up here now and then i do have a plant that i'm going to be moving but i'll show you where it is for now oh well i can't show you because it's all the way up on top of my bookcase but hang on we have a chinese money plant which is adorable and i actually plan on moving this to a wall behind me well in front of me behind you guys where i had this really big kind of like art canvas thing that was given to me and i honestly really don't like it it was really dark and it's just not my sort of thing at all so i'm going to be having this as a hanging plant over there and then on top of my bookshelf i want to get a trailing plant which is hopefully then gonna climb all the way down here turning this area into a proper witchy garden vibe so yeah i plan on changing up my room and one thing i have been wanting to do for ages is sort out this red bookshelf because i hate it is my sister's broken shelf she took the better one when she moved and i don't like it because it's red and nothing is red in my room like all my furniture is white or light wood so i'm just like it just needs to change so that is what we're going to be tackling this week we're going to attempt painting this shelf white so that it actually goes because i don't like it i could just get rid of it and buy a new one but i don't really see the point in that because where my bed is anyway it covers the broken part or like the missing shelves of this bookcase so that bit doesn't matter so i just want to change it because I hate the red. So we're just starting to do these little changes so hopefully over the next few weeks we'll see my room slowly change in and you'll come along with me as I try and choose like new bedding and cushions and things to go on my walls and just really change it up so that's the plan anyway. Right I have rambled for way too long i do need to get to work but this week's very quiet at work i think because people are actually starting to go on holiday for the first time in a while so work's gotten a little bit quiet not that i mind it to be quite honest but um yes ramble needs to stop so i will catch up with you in a couple days <laughs>
so as you can see my bookcase is now white i am so happy with it it just looks so much better in my room like yes it just makes me feel so much more just calmer having it all white it also opens up that corner instead of being so dark and i also rearranged my shelves a little bit so that we have samson at the top but then v schwab and then sarah jo mars so i have to admit it has been a busy few days so tuesday wednesday at work wednesday evening painting the bookcase and then yesterday i did some filming i actually did my september tbr early i know but i already know what i want to read that month i also have a readathon that i'm taking part in so there was just a lot of things so we just decided to get that done early while I could while the house was quiet and then I spent some time with my partner and we got pizza and it was just really good so that was lovely last night and well across the last few days but last night I stayed up late so I'm a bit tired today but I stayed up late to finish Crescent City it was so good I just ugh, it just gets to me those last few hundred like couple hundred pages just the build up the tension everything that happens in it and then some of the characters on what they do like it just pulls in your heartstrings Sarah J Mars does her characters so so well and I just become so invested and yeah last night I finished this quite late and I automatically pre-ordered the second one I wasn't going to because I was like oh it's fine I'll just pick it up when I see a copy and then I was like you know what no I Actually, I want to read this as soon as it's out so I pre-ordered that so <laughs> that's gonna be great in February and to be quite honest I'll probably reread it once more in January just to prepare for that but yeah this was just so good I love everything that comes with it and honestly the it leaves so much tension and apprehension for what's going to happen in the second book it's just a good time it's a good time I really did enjoy this so yeah no surprise that it was five stars because um I loved it I really really love it I do think it's one of her better books that she's written I feel like Throne of Grass is really good for that younger YA scene that slowly builds up into the new adult scene as the series goes on and then you have the A Court of Thorns and Roses series which is definitely more new adult although I have to admit that's my least favorite series by her although her most recent book was a good one and then we have this one which is hands down my favorite so I'm definitely hoping it stays that way so yeah loved this so good and then we have The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe which I am halfway through I have been enjoying this actually I read more of it yesterday it's a really quick read it stays like the film stayed quite true to what's happening in the book like I very few minute changes here and there but that's it and this is a book that definitely does last throughout the ages like this is definitely a story I would happily reread to my nephews and know that they would enjoy it and it's just got so much to it that you would like like it's got that portal fantasy you have the world that's being created you have the childish things to it but I can also appreciate it as an adult so I do think it's a good one so I do plan on finishing up this across the weekend honestly probably before then like likely tonight but we'll see what happens but yeah this is actually really good so thank you to my little brother for letting me read this one it's actually turned into quite a good book I'm not sure what rating this will come out as like it's just an enjoyable whimsical book so we'll see and then that's it I do have I believe four books left on my TBR which I don't think I'm going to get done because I think we've got just under two weeks until the end of the month and you know normally that I would say yep that's doable but one of those books is a chunkier book so I don't know though the next book for sure or at least one of the books before the end of the month will be House of Hollow because obviously that is the book that you guys have decided which is the book that I very much have to read for the month that's one book I'm like yep have to read that one because you guys have chosen it for me so that's definitely one I'm going to be reading and then I have Hamnet Master of Sorrows or The Professor by Charlotte Bronte to read as well so I don't know whether to leave Master of Sorrows because I know that's the book that's the bigger one and just get the three shorter books done or what I haven't decided because I feel kind of bad because it would be the second time Master of Sorrow has been on TBR and I haven't got around to it but I have just finished a fantasy book so I feel like changing it up <sighs> decisions to be made but before we make that decision I need to go to work so 
we're gonna go to work and then we'll see what we get up to and what I read over the weekend. I have no plans for this weekend apart from work today and tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we'll see what it brings. I really don't know. I'm hoping either way it will be a good time. So that's it. I really feel like it's been a while since I've spoken and yet not a lot's happened apart from painting a bookshelf and then saying I finish a book. But there we go. That's life. Um, right, I'm in ramble territory. Also, if you can notice this like little red line here, I've just realised. So basically, because this shelf is in the way here, this shelf, um, I can't reach all the way in to paint that bit. But that bit you can see on camera, so I think I'd need to just try and do that tiny little touch up. We'll do that today to be definite. But that's rambling, so let's go to work instead. <laughs> so it's time to wrap up this vlog and I can say it's been quite a nice few days honestly work wasn't too busy and yeah honestly what did I do oh so Friday evening I watch a program which is a bit unusual for me because I don't tend to watch tv but I watch a program all about the Berlin family because since reading The Other Berlin Girl by Philippa Gregory I have been in love with the Tudor period and just wanted to learn more about the family and it just so happens that BBC Two are doing this show all about the Berlin's family rise and their ultimate fall and it's been really enjoyable. I sit there with my mum and dad watching it and it's just really good. My dad's a bit of a history buff anyway so when I saw it and I was like, oh, can we please watch it? He was more than happy, which was great. So it's really nice just to spend an hour on a Friday evening, chilling out with them and watching this programme. And it's so interesting. And it also makes me realise how well Philippa Gregory actually followed the events and the timeline of everything that happens. So I'm absolutely loving that. And it just has really got me in this mood to read even more by Philippa Gregory and more on the Tudor period, because I just think it's such an interesting time of upheaval and everything that that just goes on and I think it's so interesting so yeah loving watching that so that was my Friday evening and then after I finished watching that I did finish The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and this came out as three stars I think up until about the halfway point it was heading towards four stars but the last half of the book was really really fast paced and it just kind of jumped and all the exciting like build up to things was just done in like a page and I think it would have been better if it had been more built up but bearing in mind this is a children's book so I do understand why it's so fast paced and I still think again I stick to what I said before this is a good book that you could read to children even now I think it holds up really well but for me personally I just found that ending a bit too rushed but still three stars so still really enjoyed this it was honestly better than what I thought it was going to be because I've always kind of put off reading his books but this was actually pretty decent then Saturday didn't really do much, didn't really read much, just kind of met up with my partner and we made macaroni and cheese, which was really tasty. Macaroni and cheese is one of my favourite foods to have. It's just cheese and pasta and you just, it's good, it's a good time. So we did that and just relaxed. And then yesterday we went to Costco, which in Costco I found How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. This is a book that I've been seeing around on Bookstagram and I've been kind of interested in getting mainly because of this awesome cover like it is the pink that I adore and I just find the title so intriguing and it literally says on the back kill my family make a claim on their fortune get away with the above adopt a dog it just sounds like a good time I think I'm hoping anyway it's going to be like Foul is Fair which is one of my favourite books of the year so far. I really enjoyed that story. That is a Lady Macbeth retelling and the reason that actually kinched it for me to pick this book up is because at the start of this book it has a quote from William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. And so it just makes me think, oh, is this another Macbeth inspired 
retelling because that sounds so good. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm going to be highly disappointed if it's not like that, but that is the hope. I am just ah, so excited. And of course it's a beautiful pink color, which yes. So I saw this, obviously because it's in Costco, it was a reduced price. So I think I got it for like seven pounds, which is really good. So I was like, okay, you're coming home with me. But that evening, so yesterday evening, I have started a book, which I am absolutely in love with. I think the atmosphere is amazing and it's almost like a dark fairy tale and that is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This is the book that you guys chose from my August TBR game which each month I try and give you guys a prompt where I have two different books that could fulfill it and you get to vote to see what book gets read and this is the one that won for August and oh, I'm loving it so much. I am on chapter 10 and it's so interesting. We're following these three sisters who all went missing when they were younger for a month. And when they came back, they started changing appearance. So they were these beautiful black haired, blue eyed girls. And now they have white hair, black eyes, and something strange is always happening around them. And now their older sister has gone missing again. And it's just so interesting. I love it. I love the atmosphere. I think the writing is decadent and lovely. It just is such a good time. It's only a short book. It's less than 300 pages. So I'm almost halfway through, but it's just, oh, it's so good. And on each of the chapters, you have this gorgeous little illustration on the sides, which is of flowers and that, which, everything they talk about in here comes back to this really sickly sweet smell that borders on things going rotten and flower imagery is a big thing in here and it's just this could become a new favorite book this is everything that i like i like darker stories that have the fairy tale aesthetic which is why i like retellings so much because generally speaking retellings do tend to have that darker theme going through them which I find really really just addictive and I'm always on the hunt for more so I'm so pleased I bought this on a whim again this is one that I saw on bookstagram and I literally saw in Waterstones on their buy one get one half price and I was like eh why not I'll give it a try and I'm so so pleased that one that I got it and two that you guys have chosen this this is really enjoyable I am actually really invested and I cannot wait to see what is actually happening again I think this is going to be another portal fantasy story which honestly that's just another thing that ticks all the boxes for me lately it's just yes so yeah, really enjoying this one, but this will be carried on into next week's vlog. So that's where we're at for this week. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you've all had a good week. Let me know something that good that's happened to you in the week so far and what you're reading. I'm always intrigued to know, but for now I do have work to get to. So I'm gonna go. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here, all the usual stuff. My social medias will be linked below and like always, I will catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.